back to my channel and if you're new here a big welcome to you make sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon that way you won't miss any of my upcoming videos you'll get notified when I upload my next video and I just want to say a huge thank you to all of you because I reached 50,000 subscribers and I'm really really kind of shocked to reach that amount of subscribers and um, I'm happy so I'm gonna keep going and um, obviously you enjoy my videos so I'm glad I think the majority of you are here for my bird videos let me know which videos you're interested in is it my birds because for the new people if you're just joining in I have 28 birds and I have three standard poodles I have two rabbits a hamster some puffer fish tetra fish and some bettas did I miss anybody maybe a spider on the wall <laughs> I don't know but anyway I have lots of pets and uh, hope you enjoy my channel hope you stay and uh, watch my upcoming videos and this video as well so in today's video for my 50,000 subscriber mark I wanted to answer some of your questions I, I had a lot of my subscribers asking me over and over and over how do I get my birds back in their cages in the evening because it has so many of them and there's a lot of of you who have problems getting your birds um, back in your cages where are you going Rio come here and this is real come here sweetie this is real and she is here she wants another treat I'm just giving her little pieces of millet she is an Indian ringneck parakeet say hello and she's eight years old and she's very tame I don't have a problem with her getting back in the cage but I do have a lot of small birds I mean you might have a totally different bird than what I have but generally I'll show you or tell you how I get my birds back in and maybe it can help you is it's the most question I've been getting lately it's hard for me to film all of it you know to move the camera as I'm moving around so I'll just briefly show you bits and pieces of what I do so I want to show I don't want to scare Rio because I want to show you something I use a long I'm just gonna pick it up it's okay girl it's okay she's not used to the ladder because I don't use it with her anyways you know these bird ladders she's looking I'm just moving slowly you know you can hook them on the back of your cages two hooks there this is a long one I'm not sure how long this is I have to measure it but anyways I use this long uh, wooden bird ladder um, because I have a bird room, you know, and the ceilings are, I don't know how tall they are, eight, nine, ten feet, I'm not sure. But anyways, they're too tall for me to reach um, the top of my ceiling when my birds are up there flying around. I can't reach up, it's too tall to reach. So what I've done is I just um, guide my birds in with this. I guide them in and they know, and when they see this ladder, they know, and they, sometimes they just go right in their cages. So I kind of, I put it behind them and I just kind of like, you know, go like this. And they all go to where I'm putting the ladder. They all go flying to the direction that I'm, I'm putting the ladder on. So if I want them to go this way, I'm gonna put it behind them and go. And then I use the word too. I always say bedtime or good night. Um, you know, pick your own word that you wanna use for your bird to go to bed. But sometimes birds will know, especially the, the parrots, the bigger birds, if you say goodnight, they won't go. So maybe, you know, it's up to your discretion what you want to do. But um, usually I have to say a bedtime, goodnight, and I put it behind, say the bird is here, and I'll put it behind them, and they all scooter along, and they go into the cage. My budgies actually are the easiest birds that go in their cage. And also another thing what this ladder is good for is teach them to step up on the end of this, on a, on a perch on this. So some of my birds actually, I'll put it up to them, you know, very slowly, you don't want to scare them, and they'll step up. So they're up here, and sometimes they'll walk down. My lindies are pretty good at that, they'll walk, walk right down, it's kind of key right to me. But um, some of them will just sit up here, the ones that aren't so hand tame, they'll sit up there, and I just bring them along, and I put them in their cage. So that's number two. So I showed you two things so far. And another thing, birds are very food motivated, most of them anyways. And my little birds, they love millet. So I don't use it, I try not to give my birds millet in the cage because if you do, they don't think this is a favorite treat. So you really wanna use the, the favorite treat that they like. 
only use it for when you want them to do something, you know, like step up or go in the cage or do a trick or whatever, use their favorite treat and only use that for that part of the day. If you always have millet in their cage, they won't care. They won't really, really care about that. So I use, uh, you know, I just take a small piece of millet, I'll kind of break off a piece, it's breakable. This is called a spray millet. It comes in sticks like this. And you want a piece of it and you can break off little tiny pieces. There we go, sweetie pie. And so, you know, you can hold the whole thing if you want, but I usually use pieces. I'll put it in my hand and I'll put my other hand in front or you can use the same hand and the bird to kind of stick it up like this, the bird will step up and eat, try to eat the millet and you can walk into the cage. And then what I normally do is why I use a small piece is I, I can put it in the cage so that they know, you know, they're going to go in the cage, they're going to eat it, they're going to be happy, they're not going to be upset about going into the cage. And another thing, make sure their cage is um, is nice for them, like make sure it's their home. Don't don't use their cage as a punishment. You know, if you, you're, you're sending your bad bird to tune or something and throw them in there and shut the door, they're going to be terrified. So you want to make sure their cage is nice, has some nice toys and, you know, their food and water is in there, um, nice perches and comfortable and you know where they sleep you want to make it a nice cage where they enjoy it's like their bedroom the seat has their own apartment you know they're coming out to go to a party and then you come home into your own apartment it's your own room or your bedroom and it's cozy and it's just you you know in there so you want them to enjoy the cage so that they will go back in so so far i mentioned the ladder or a big long perch if you can find one to kind of shoo them in or kind of not i don't want to say chase i'm not chasing them i'm just kind of guiding them, I'm guiding them in, or they can step up on it, or use a food reward and get them to step up. You can also try the stick if they won't use their hand, you can try the stick, but you can't reach it if they're really high. But if you put it down lower, they might come down the ladder to get the millet. You can try that. Now some birds, especially little birds like my canaries, it depends on your cage as well. If your cage has small doors, sometimes they don't want to go in or they can't get in. So you always want to have some kind of perch in front of their door. Any kind of perch that'll fit, that'll help them land on it. And then they can land on it and go in because sometimes they can't, they can't guide themselves and they can't just fly around and fly right in the door. It's kind of difficult for some birds. So if you have a perch on the outside of the door, they can land on the perch and crawl in the door. So just try different types of perches and uh, you know my canary is a little bit fussy sometimes they'll only go on the side door like there's a couple different doors there's a small door then a big door for some reason they won't go in the big door they need to go in the small door so you have to figure out what how your bird likes to get into the cage and treat it um, in that way so in another way look at my shirt I got a minute on over it's okay um, have you heard of target training I'm actually gonna try tar target training with my uh, Senegal I haven't done it yet, but I'm very interested in it. Basically, you get a stick. This is just a straw, just to show you um, for demonstration purposes. But usually, it's a chopstick or some kind of wooden stick, and you're going to hold the clicker in your hand. This goes around my hand. You don't really need to use a band, but I just got one. And you're going to put the clicker on top of the stick. But you have to start uh, clicker training your bird first before you do it all in one day to get them in the cage. And basically, what it is is you you um, get your bird to I've never done that with real let's give it a try you get your bird to touch the end of the stick just touch it not chew it and then you click and then you treat so every time they see this stick they'll come and touch it they get a treat so you can just kind of guide them like you touch the perch you guide them and you, eventually you can touch the cage and the cage door they'll follow it give them a treat and they'll go in it's really neat anyway there's a very good channel you can learn about this and about any kind of training I've got a lot of training questions and the best channel that I watch is called Bird Tricks. I'm going to put their link down below in my description. Go to their channel. They're amazing. They free fly their um, big birds, their macaws and all different birds and they train and they're, uh, they do shows and all kinds of things. It's really, I really love their channel and I, I, that's why I'm recommending it to you. So go have a look because you always have all these training questions. Go there and they have a website. They even have a course that you can uh, teach your birds. So let's just try it with beautiful fun. As soon as she touches it. Good girl. Well, I did it, see? I messed up there. 
I should use my other hand because she never had the clicker before and I moved my hand too much. Let's try again. I'm sorry. Maybe she won't do it now. Yes! And that's how you do it. So she's going to associate the target here with the treat. So I can, you know, make it go all over, but it takes time. You, you, you got to take, you know, it takes a few weeks. But the smarter the bird, the quicker they learn, right? So anyways, that's another way. Another way would be, you know, depends on how long you leave your bird out for. Like, if you let your bird out of the cage, and say you got a budgie or a canary, one of those birds that like to fly all over the place, if your bird is fully flighted, they're going to come out, they're not going to want to go back in in 10 minutes. You know, you have to let, you have to give them a routine. My birds are mostly out all day, and they get to know. If they have a routine, they almost go back in themselves, most of them. Most of mine go back in by themselves, usually. It depends on the season, like summer, it's light out longer than the winter. So when it gets dark in the winter, you know, I close the curtains. If you have a dimmer in your room, you can start dimming the lights. They know it's bedtime and they go in their cage to go to bed. But if you have a routine, say you let your birds out for two hours, they kind of know when the two hours is. So you do routine and, and you get them in, they'll go. Just give them a routine. Don't let them out for 10 minutes. Like I could say a budget to fly all over your house and expect them to go back in. I mean, they probably would if you, if you train them, but they need to come out longer than that. So, for instance, you know, if you give them an hour and they know this and they'll know, they know when they're smart, they're very smart. They know how long an hour is, two hours is, and they know when their food is. And one thing I've seen a few people doing, and I've helped some people as well, is they put out food on, on top of their bird's cage, especially budgies. They put millet, all kinds of food, and they say the birds won't go back into the cage. And I said, well, why would they go when they got all their food on top of their cage? So I told her, take away all that food, put it in their cage, put it at the bottom of the cage, and guess what? It worked. When they get hungry, they'll go in. Now my room is because I have a bird room, my birds are out all day, I do have food on top, like the fresh food. Sometimes I do put millet, de depending, but I do like to use the millet um, method to get them back in, in, the, in the cage. So just make sure it's a routine, they love their cage, and you know, if it's a couple hours or all day, dim the lights, shut the curtains, make it a little darker, they'll go in. And another way, there's another way if you want to get your bird in quicker, which I have to use for two birds, which um, is one of my, my love bird and one of my cockatiels, Monty. I really have a hard time getting him in. Sometimes he does go in with the millet, but what I use is my, I use my cell phone. He loves to look at other cockatiels on YouTube and himself because I have a, a video of him singing a song. So I play his song on my phone. He's like, woohoo, yay. He comes over and he lands on his on my hand to watch his, his movie. <laughs> so I just kind of walk over to this cage, I put him in, I let him watch it, he's all happy, he's singing to himself, and he's in. My lovebird, the same thing. My lovebird is actually one of the hardest birds to get in. My lovebird, I have a lovebird, a fork, and my cock, come here baby, and my cockatiel Monty. Three of them are pretty hard to get in. So my lovebird loves watching YouTube as well. So I show him his own videos or my videos, but any bird that trips, especially a lovebird, I'll show him a lovebird singing and I'll just put him in the cage and I let him watch for a while because I don't want him to know the routine. If they know the routine, they're smart enough, he'll think, hey, she's going to put me in the cage, you know, take off. So I just do it slowly. I talk to him, you know, give him a little treat, a little piece of millet and let him watch his movie for a little while. And then he's happy. He actually goes on the swing, he goes to sleep. Let me see, Brielle. Rio, she's pretty good. Like her, she does like millet, but I don't really offer her millet very much. She does like almonds. So I will take the almonds. I got oh girl. I will uh, save the almonds for when she has to go in her cage because sometimes she won't go in her cage and um, I just get an almond and she knows the word. I don't have any now. I don't want to think she's going to think I have one, but I say the word and um, she's like yummy and she'll come over and she'll eat it from my hand and I give her a few more in my hand and I just bring her over to the cage and go in and she's happy. I put some almonds in her in her bowl and she's, she's happy and she's in her cage. So I don't have to, you know, chase them all over the house. I don't need to get a towel. I don't need to cover them. I mean, if you have an absolute untamed wild bird and there's no way you can get it in, you have to, you know, train it and, and do it step by step. Um, and if you have to catch it from the ground, a towel is best instead of your hand because it's going to freak out, right, if, it, if it's not used to hands. So just gently place the towel. Don't be throwing it on them and, you know, scaring the bird. Gently put a towel, pick them up, and talk to them, you know, say good boy and whatever, and, and put them in the cage. Also, I want to mention about my boards. Uh, most of them are hand tame and they step up on my hand. That's one thing I forgot to say is if they're hand tame, they can just step up on your hand. 
And the most of my barks were going by themselves. You can see there's four or five of them in there already. And I put in this uh, stand here, this tree stand. They like to land on the stand there and then they jump in. Otherwise, most of the time they do step up. But if they don't, they'll just go over there. When they see the budgies going in, they know it's bedtime, so they start going in on their own as well. Good boy. Here we go. Good boy. There's one more over here. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll take this whole stand down and I'll just put it right here. Go on. Let me go in. There we go. Good night. So I think that's uh all of my tips for getting your bird back in the cage. I hope you enjoyed. And once again, thank you so much for helping me get to 50,000 subscribers. I have a lot of videos in mind to make. I just have to find the time because I'm busy. I do work during the day and I have all my pets to take care of. I have a list of videos that I wish I can just stay home for two months and make them all, but I can't. And um, maybe one day my job will be YouTube permanently, like full time, I hope anyway because I love doing it. And uh, let me know what videos you are more interested in. My birds, or my dogs, or my rabbits, or my hamster, or my fish. Uh, which videos, if you like them all, or are you just here for one specific uh, type of, of pet that I have. Anyway, I hope you like them all, but I do the majority of my videos are all my birds. So thank you very much for watching, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And give me a thumbs up if you like my video. And we will see you in the next video. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Bye.